Greetings, gentlemen and ladies out there. Coach Clive Maxeef here for this unique, shall we say, edition of the Men on Form podcast. Uh, this week, uh, the Men on Form offer a sharing from my partner in personal development and Men on Form crime, fellow coach Michael Hilton. A little backstory uh, before this drops. Um, Michael first shared this this story as a video uh, on his page about two, three weeks ago. And uh, it seems to have resonate, resonated out there with a lot of people. Um, as of today, the 15th of June, 2020, uh, the video is up to over 350,000 views, uh, which is incredible. And um, we were keen to, to share it on the Men on Form platform. Um, so you guys uh, also got to hear it because uh, Michael's got a, an important message here. Um, but it's not really a message. It's just a, a story, really, um, a sharing from, from where he was at in his life uh, in October 2014. Um, so uh, before, we, uh, bef before we pull the trigger on this, um, just two things from me. Um, if this is something that resonates with you, if this really connects with you, then don't hesitate to contact um, the Men on Form, uh, at Men on Form, so Men on Form at gmail.com, or reach out to Michael himself, head over to, to Michael Hilton, uh, the Michael Hilton Facebook page, you can contact him directly there and start a discussion. And yeah, if this is, this is something that you, you feel someone, someone in your network, someone in your life, um, needs to hear uh, or it could be something that could just support them and just maybe maybe offer them um, a little bit of light a little bit of, of food for thought then um, please please do share so um, with no no further ado this is Michael Hilton October 2014 Back in 2014, around my birthday, October time, when I probably hit the lowest point ever in my life. Like I'd had some low points. I'd, I'd had my struggles in the past with drugs and drink, and um, you know, but this point particularly was the lowest point, and this was when I was just ready to to check out. I was ready to end it. And I'd been thinking about it for a period of time because I was at a point in my life where I was sick and tired of this constant struggle with the stress, the anxiety, the overwhelm, feeling down and depressed, and not knowing how to change it, right? It was like this constant companion I was carrying around myself. I often say like, you know, back then being inside my head was like listening to a thousand chattering monkeys just constantly going on, constantly doubting myself, putting myself down, guilt and shame, carrying around the guilt and shame for the things I've done in the past and the things I was currently doing. And it was just no respite for myself. Like I was always on this run. I was always trying to get away from myself. I was just, it wasn't particularly nice to be around, right, at that time especially to my partner and especially to my kid. Like, I couldn't switch this off. And and at the time, like, if you looked at my life on the outside back then, like, things looked okay. You know, I'd, I'd done well, I hid behind this mask. Anyone asked me how I was doing, yeah, I'm good, I'd crack a joke and everything was okay. And I just, on the outside, it looked okay. But on the inside, it was a very different story. Staring at the wall for hours, just constantly in this gaze, just thinking about, is this the best it's, is this the best it's gonna get? Like regardless of how much money I made, regardless of what external things I got, cars, girlfriends, money's in the past, it's just this thing has always been there. It's just it's just something there. And you know, the thing about it was at the time is I thought I was broken. Like you hear a lot of people speak about that, and you hear a lot of people share their stories about the struggles they've been through, and I thought I was broken. I thought there was something fundamentally wrong with me and I didn't know how to change it. And then as I was building my business, this became a distraction for me. And there's this great saying, and I've heard it many, many times, and it's always stuck with me and it'll always stick with me. And I say it to people now, it's like, what you can't be with won't let you be. So I was constantly on this run. You know, I had my struggles before with drink and drugs, just to change the way I felt about myself, with food, change the way I felt about myself, 
pong, just to change the way I felt about myself, spending money, change anything just to change and get away from Michael. And it was like this constant itch that couldn't be scratched. This constant itch. It's like carrying this 500 pound suit around with myself, right? I'm just trying to put on a smile and a brave face, but deep down inside I was just struggling. I was struggling. And when the business started and I started working the business, and it just, like I said, become another distraction. It become, <laughs> it started off with, with, with working normal hours and then, and then I started working longer hours and I was getting up early in the morning. And I was going to bed late at night and it just become another distraction to take me away from myself. And in the end, I couldn't shut that noise off either. In the end, it started having effects on my life, my mental health and my physical health at another level, at a completely another level. Because I just couldn't shut the noise off. I was just constantly grinding and working. I fell into the, the trap of the modern day man, right? And when you know this conversation, how you doing? Yeah, yeah I'm good. It's good to see you, innit? Yeah, busy? Yeah, yeah, I'm busy. I'm really busy, right? They're the first two words that come out of most men's mouths when they see each other. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm busy. And that was me, and I felt guilty, and I felt ashamed if I wasn't busy. I felt like I was less than, and if I wasn't busy, and I wasn't crushing it, and, you know, beast mode on all the time. And, um, it took its toll. It took its toll. Now, like, there's nothing wrong with working hard, there's nothing wrong with building your business, there's nothing wrong with that stuff, but there's a right way and a wrong way. And the way I was doing it was the wrong way taking more and more time away from my wife and my kids. I was spending less and less time at home. I was spending less and less time on myself. Just this constant distraction. And I was busy. I was really busy spinning plates. I wasn't being very effective. I remember this conversation. I remember this. I remember my wife saying to me, when are you going to spend more time with us? When are we going to get to see you? And I can't, I laugh now at the words that come out of my mouth and the words were, well, when I get busier and make more money, then I'll spend time with you. It was always my thing. I will do it once I get this. Like, I will get my health in order once I make this amount of money or I get this job. I will spend time with my wife and my kids when I get this. I will... I will do this, right? I will sort my health out, my mental health out once I get this. And it was always something I kept putting in the future. I was always putting things in the future. I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week. And I just never got around to doing any of it. Never got around to doing anything. And then come that day, when I was burning all to the ground. Like my marriage was struggling. I was struggling as a father. Like the man that I said I wanted to be, the father that I said I wanted to be. Like my dad wasn't really in my life as, as, as a kid. You know, I never really had a father. And, um, have I got daddy issues? Maybe. <laughs> but, um, and I said I'd never be that man. And I've been exactly that man to my kid. It was just horrible to be around, just grumpy, short. And, and the truth is, and this hurts to say, that my wife and my, my boy had just become like something that was in my way. I was resentful of them because they were like wanting my time. And I was too busy in my head, in my world, trying to build this is that when you know you're driving around in the Lamborghini or the Ferrari with no one else in the car with you so I got to the point where I just snapped you know and I burnt my business to the ground the stress the anxiety the overwhelm the feeling of depression I was just, energy was on the floor I was lethargic I, I, and I just couldn't carry on and it just I just walked away and I knew if I carried on down this path I was going to lose my wife and I was going to lose my kid I knew that would happen. So I fell into another trap of the modern day man and that was the lone wolf, right? Trying to figure this all out by myself. Trying to go it alone, right? Having all the answers but not having no results. And I spent years doing that, spinning my plates, just trying to figure this all out by myself. Trying to sort this out, you know? Just digging more of a hole, really. I was just in this rut. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to change it, right? Like, like someone once said to me, all your best thinking's got you here. And then it got to a point where I pulled the trigger. Like, I, I was listening to podcasts, I was watching the audio books, I was reaching out, asking for advice from people. And someone once said to me, like, Mike, 
you know, at some point you've got to stop asking advice and you just got to jump in. You just got to go all in on this. Because if you don't, what's going to change? It's all well and good asking for advice, but what are you doing with this advice? And I spent years asking advice from people, but still thinking I knew best. See, the results I would get in my life and the point I'd got to in my life, I still thought I knew best. And I still thought well, I knew what was best for other people. <laughs> You know, I often say this, it's, some people want to change, but they don't need to change. Some people need to change, but they don't want to change. And at that point in my life, the wanting to and the needed to come together. So I went on this journey and I started hiring some of the best coaches, mentors and trainers. And these trainers and these, these guys, they started helping me. And I remember my first coach and I sat down with him and he, and he said like, he really helped me with my family situation he was like right because I'm, I'm there and, I, and and it started to build up again I'm like right I get a coach and I start building the business back up and, and, and that was number one priority and, and he said to me like what do you want and I was like right I'm going to start building the business back up I'm going to build my relationship with my wife and kids but once I've got the business up and start making money then I'll, I'll focus on the family and he's like no see the thing is guys it's like I built this tiny little life around this around the business like all my, or for as long as I remember, I had all this stress and anxiety and overwhelm, and it built and built up, and then I got my business, and then that becoming another distraction for me. And I got to a point where this tiny little life I'd built around my business, and everything comes second. My wife comes second, my kids come second. I'd be home late. I was, I was constantly like putting them second. I'd be home at five for dinner, and then the phone would ring at four o'clock when I was in the office. I need to come in and see you at six. Okay, I won't be home. Constantly always putting them off, putting them second. Face buried in my phone, constantly on the laptop, always working. When I was at home, I was never at home. I was just always, I was always busy. My mind was always busy at work. I couldn't just be with them. I couldn't hear what they were saying. They were talking to me and I just couldn't hear them. And he said to me like, what, what are you going to do different? What are you going to do different? I don't know. I haven't got the answers for that. And he really helped me. It really helped me to see that you, it really helped me to see that you build the life you want and then you build the business around it. And he helped me to see that. And we started working on that. Like what comes first for my family, my wife and my kids, that comes first. You don't wait till you get to somewhere before you start working on that. See, I dropped that lone wolf mentality and, and this mask off that on the outside that I wanted the world to see that everything was okay when deep down inside it wasn't. You know, my mental health started improving. I started working on my mindset, my physical health. I started working on my body. I, I was getting up, I had routines, I had habits, and I was doing things. I was moving away from the things that I used to do. And look, you know, this story is all my responsibility. This isn't a pity party, like, you know, one of the things I learned as, uh, from being coached and one of the things I learned was taking ownership of my life, taking responsibility of, of my behaviours and how I felt and what I was doing, how I was acting on a day-to-day -day basis. Without that, nothing changes. See, I'd been trying to change for years and years and years, but I could never take responsibility. And I look back at my life then and I was just, I was a little boy housed in a man's body. The way I used to react, the way I used to sulk, the way I used to throw my toys out the pram. I was just a little boy housed in a man's body. I was frightened. That's what I was. I was frightened. I was frightened to tell people what was really going on for me. I was frightened to, to show people that the real Michael, in case you didn't like me or in case you judged me or in case you thought bad of me. And over this time, like, working on my mindset and my health, and my energy started to improve, my focus started to improve. All areas of my life improved. My, my relationship with my wife improved. My energy was better, not just not just for the boardroom, but for the bedroom too, generally. As a father, I got better. Just generally, my whole my whole life improved, but it took work, and I wasn't prepared to do that before. See, I, I got into this this place of thinking that this is the way I am. I hear that all the time, and that's what I used to say. It's just the way I am. Same crap, different day, right? My stories, my beliefs about who I was and what was possible for me. I started working through those. What if they're not true? What if they're just lies I've been telling myself on a day-to-day -day basis? 
look, and I don't know who's going to listen to this. I don't know who's going to watch this. I know there's many guys that go through this because as I've been on this journey and documented, other guys have reached out to me. How did you get a handle on that stress and the anxiety and the overwhelm? How did you start achieving these results as a father, as a husband? How did you start doing this stuff? How did you get in shape? It took work. But there's no magic pill. And I get it. I understand. You know, if you're at that place and and you're not sure if it'll work for you or, you know, I've tried stuff before and it's not going to work. to like put my family first while still building my business I learned you know how to believe in myself more you know seeing that all these stories and misunderstandings and all these thoughts I was having about myself might not be true they might not be true or if they are true that's okay because they're there to show me something like all these feelings of stress and anxiety and depression were actually there as I call it the engine management light of my life were just there to show me something about myself I actually started learning how they were working for me, not against me. I started taking small, simple little steps each day, started moving forward, and, and things started to change. Things started to change. See, when I was bogged down looking at all the problems, all the, all the struggles, and looking at poor old me, and I'm never going to change this, and never taking responsibility, always blaming someone else. It's always someone else's fault. It's always your fault. If you had a wife like mine, you would do this. It was just always my fault. Uh, it was always someone else's fault. It was never my fault. It was always someone else's fault. When I, when I started taking responsibility and ownership of my life, there comes great power with that, right? When you take responsibility and ownership of how you feel, how you act, life starts to change because you're in control of your life. So if you've watched this and you've kind of identified anything that I've said, look, nothing to sell here, nothing. I'm just sharing this with, with other other people because you know I know what it feels like to be in that place and I know a lot of other people feel like that and I know a lot of guys that feel like that have got kids and I know of people that have taken their lives that have left kids and wives behind and for me that's just not acceptable to not be able to share this and maybe another man struggling that maybe another man thinking about it maybe another man's business is going down the swanee, maybe his relationship's going down the swanee, maybe he's not being the best father, maybe his health's declining, right, his energy and focus all over the place and he's, he's just in a really low place and he doesn't know what to do. For me, it was about stepping up for my wife and my kids, and mainly myself, raising my standards. What did I want to do? Do I want to continue my life like this or did I want to open my mind up and look at, maybe I didn't have all the answers, maybe I wasn't right. I look back at my life and I laugh at some of the ways I used to act. I just like such a such a sport little brat, entitled, thinking I deserved everything. But if you're watching this, look, you're in the place. There's hope. There's always hope. And all that pain and suffering, and you think sometimes the only way out is just to blend it. There's a way out. Is well. It takes work.